And they knew it, didn't they? They knew. Uh, I put away my fake rock. <laughs> they, they knew whether it was a fake or whether it was real. They had touched him. They, they had seen him, right? Uh, and so we looked at that, and, and we said, this is true stuff. In fact, I share with you that in, in my generation, the guy that went from college to college and, and made the statement that he never talked to anyone that he couldn't prove that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead as much as the Civil War was fought, okay? So it is true, um, but what it, how does it change things in our lives? Uh, does it just mean business as usual? And that's what we're kind of focused on. What does it mean for you? And last uh, Sunday, we looked at the idea of presence, um, the ways that Jesus is present in our life. If you had a chance to review those this week, great. If not, then your bulletin again. You know, t- take your bulletin home. You can look at that. Um, but today, we're going to talk about purpose, uh, the, the gift of meaning. Uh, let's see. In your, um, in your bulletins, if, if you got a bulletin today, uh, there's a little paragraph in here, and it, it goes like this. It says, uh, it starts with this quote, uh, what's it all about, Alfie? Diana Ross, right? And then what is truth? P- Pontius Pilate. Have you ever wondered what it's all about? As your life is filled with more and more stuff that comes faster and faster, as you actually accomplish a dream and are left in a letdown, has ever happened to you? You got the dream, but it just leaves you wanting, huh? As you go through great uh, life changes that frankly cast doubt on the, ac- all, on the accomplishments of all you have done before, as you perhaps even think about death, your death or the death of others, as it hits you that everything you could possibly do has been done before a thousand times over, are you sometimes left with this question? What's it all about? What's my purpose? What's the meaning of stuff? Enter the resurrected one to give our lives your life and all we do in life purpose, meaning, and direction. That's what we're going to focus on today. And the foundation is the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the dead. Okay? In this text, Jesus comes to the disciples uh, in the evening and he says to them, peace be with you. I love this picture. It doesn't show the rest of the disciples there, but it's just as if he's coming to us. And that's why these texts were written down, so that the Spirit of God could use these words to touch our hearts uh, and, and, and to bring us Jesus in the same way that, that Jesus stepped into the midst of the disciples in a real way. He's in our midst, okay? So Jesus stepped into the midst of the disciples, and he said, peace be with you. This Peace is, is the shalom peace of body, soul, mind, and spirit, the, the Hebrew word shalom, okay? Um, it's the peace that puts life back together the way it was meant to be. Uh, you see, what um, God created us uh, to have this perfect relationship with him and to be only complete in that relationship. It's like a lock and a key. Um, and, and, and through that relationship of love with God, to, to have relationship with others, to have that relationship of love. And what sin does is it, is it cuts off that relationship from God. And so we're never complete. We're always wondering, uh, as Augustine said a long time ago, uh, a guy, famous Christian, lived about 300 years after Christ. He said, he says, without Christ, we're always searching and never finding. We're always looking to be filled up and we're never getting there. It's because we were created to be complete only in relationship with God. And, and we, can, we can fight that. We can find other things that fills us up, but it's just not gonna work. Huh? And, and so we have no peace. Apart from Jesus Christ, we have no peace. And, and, that, and that drifts into our relationships. We, we have broken relationships and we struggle in our relationships and our world is broken besides. Uh, everything is topsy-turvy. Um, and what we tend to do is, is try to create peace in ourselves, of ourselves, through what we can do, through what we can accomplish. Uh, and, and Jesus comes to us and he says, no, Peace comes from me. It's, it's kind of like in the book of Hebrews. It talks about Jesus being the, the rest, the R-E-S-T, the Sabbath of God. All those centuries that the Jewish people celebrated the Sabbath, they rested, didn't do anything on Saturday. It pointed towards the fact that God would do it all in Jesus Christ, and you could rest in him. You could have peace in him. Jesus steps into the midst of these disciples, uh, and he gives them peace. Now, think about where they are. They've got the world shut out. They're so afraid. Are you ever in that place? Just leave me alone. Huh? Shutting everybody out. They were afraid that the Jewish leaders would kill them. Are you afraid of people? What are you afraid of in your life? They were bearing this great guilt. What, what do you think was their, was their first thought when they saw Jesus? They'd all run away from him at the cross. Remember that? John had come slinking back towards the end, but they'd all run, come, been running away. 
And at the Garden of Gethsemane, remember he went back three times and said, pray with me, pray with me, pray with me. You know, I'm going through this hard stuff, won't you pray with me? And they all fell asleep. Guilt. Peter denied him three times. Guilt. Where do you, where do you have guilt in your life? Where do you have so much that you just kind of slam it down and try to forget it, but it's still there? And you know that you, you can't fix it. There's no way out. It's like you're in this room, shut up, like these disciples were. Where do you look for security in your life? The disciples wanted to be safe. They were looking for security, and they couldn't find it in anything they could do. Where do you try to manufacture security in your life? But you never quite get there. You're always worried and concerned. Jesus steps into the midst of them, and he gives them this shalom peace, this peace with God, body, soul, mind, and spirit. It's like in Romans, it says, therefore, having been justified by by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And through this same peace, we dwell in his grace, his undeserved love showered down upon us. God looks down on us and smiles. Where do you need this peace in your life? Right now, God's spirit, he's, he's witnessing your heart. He's, he's in your very soul. He's in that place that you want to hold back from him and, and say, I'll, I'll find my own peace in this place. And he's saying, no, you can't find it in yourself. Find peace in me alone in your whole life. In that place you don't want to give up right now. Because you won't find it in what you can do and what you can accomplish. He steps into them and he says, peace be with you. And he says, here, put your hands, put your hands where the nails went in and put your hands into my side. Know that I've won. Huh? That I've destroyed the powers of darkness. That I've crushed the serpent's head. That I took your guilt on me that you might be freed from guilt. That I took the very condemnation of God, that I was forsaken by the Father in your place so that you might know you're never, ever alone. (laughs) Put your hand here and and in my side. Stop doubting and believe. And then he says again, peace be with you. Peace is the foundation for purpose. Because he's going to talk about purpose in this text. But he lays this foundation of 10 feet thick cement, and it's called the peace that we have in him. Go ahead. Purpose begins with peace. Where do you need peace in your life? Wherever you don't have peace and you're looking to fix it yourself, the purpose of your life is to fix it. And you'll never be able to fix it in yourself. You never can do it. And so it takes over you. It enslaves you. Jesus came into the midst and said, no, I'm the one with peace. Give it all up. Look to me for peace in every crevice of your life. And you can do that as the Spirit of God touches your heart and powers you to do that, you receive that by faith, then you can have a new purpose in your life, a meaning that really, truly can fill you up, every crevice of your life. Finally, here's the piece. Here's the imprimatur. Here's the place where Jesus won. It's undeniable, and his words are true, and he brings you peace with God. You can trust him. He'll provide for you every moment and in every situation, and somehow he'll turn everything to your good. It's his promise. He will be your strength. He will be your rock. He will be your castle. He will be your fortress. He will be your shepherd. He will be the one in whose hands you're held. And you know it's true. 
because he lives. Now we tend to want to say amen and sit down. Um, we tend to want to put up a big stop sign here. Huh? Okay. I'm just going to lay in his peace. I'm going to rest in his peace. It's all good. Woohoo. Kind of like um, on the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to this mountain, right? And he was glorified before them. And there was Moses and there was Elijah. And Jesus was revealed as the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Savior of the world, the Messiah, the whole business, right? And, and, and Peter, James, and John, they said, ooh, let's just stay here, man. That's what they said, right? They said, hey, let's just build three tabernacles, three tents. We'll stay right here. Just you, me, just us three, and Jesus, right? We can have his peace. It's us. The heck with everybody else, right? See, that's what we do because of our sinful nature. We want to make it all about us. All right, I can rest in Jesus. I'm good. I'll just sit. But Jesus has a greater blessing for us. It's the blessing of purpose in our lives. Have you ever uh, woken up in the morning and you've had a good sleep, right? Um, and you just want to lay down a little while longer. It feels so good. Have you ever been there? Right? And it's like, I mean, honestly, I, that doesn't happen with me very often because I hurt all the time when I wake up. I got th th stuff that hurts. But, but sometimes I'm laying there and go, oh, man, oh, yeah, this feels so good. And you just want to lay there, right? But in a few minutes, what are you doing? I got to get up, man. I got to get going. I got to get something done. Isn't that right? I mean, you can lay there only so long, and then you got to get going. Why is that? Because we were made for purpose. We were made for a mission. We weren't made to stop and do nothing. When the foundation for peace in Jesus Christ has been laid, God gives us a greater grace to be on mission with Jesus Christ. In this text, Jesus says this. I've got to turn the page. It, he says this, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. What did Jesus do? As the Father has sent me. If we're going to walk in the steps of Jesus, if we're going to go like Jesus did, what did Jesus do? That's our job, right? That's our purpose. And you can look at any gospel. I chose Luke, but you can go Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And it goes over and over again what Jesus did. Not that he died, suffered and died and rose again. He did all that stuff. But how did he live his life? What did it mean for him to be on mission? After all, we're sent on mission just like he is. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, you've got to turn the page for me. What did Jesus do? That, 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 that's what we're going to ask here. Uh, and, and the text is going to answer. Next one. Okay. All right, so it starts in Luke 4, and, and every gospel is the same. Jesus is baptized, his public ministry begins, and it says, bang, this is what he does, okay? And then he does it over and over and over again, all right? The first thing is he preaches to people. He began to get, he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and then on the Sabbath began to teach people. With the Jews, they always came to Sabbath, right? And Jesus did, by the way, it was his custom of Texas. Jesus was in worship with a large group of people, one in seven, Okay? Kind of good for us to know, I think. Anyway, well, one in seven, and he taught the people. And this is what he did every single Sabbath. But he also went out to the countryside, didn't he? When he fed the 5,000, they all followed him. He was teaching them. He also went to those down and outers in society. A guy named Levi, he called him to faith in him. He was a tax collector. That's the low of the low. And he said, he said Levi, okay, you believe in me? You gather all your buddies, and I'm coming to have dinner at your house. And they were, the Bible says they were like the, 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 the lowlifes, the prostitutes, right, and all those that affiliated with them. And Jesus was there. He did life with them, see? And what do you think he did there? He told them the truth. He told them about a loving God. He told them about the peace that he brought. We are sent out to speak this peace into the lives of others wherever God sends us. When you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, you'll never find Jesus stand put in one place. He's always traveling. Wherever the Spirit of God takes him, wherever God takes us, it starts in our families. We, we speak the truth of love into their hearts and into their lives. We speak his truth. But Jesus did more than that. He also cast out demons. He pushed back the darkness. Here, the demon cries out, and Jesus says, Be quiet, come out of him. And Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, he won. We're sent out in the same way that Jesus' words push back the demons of darkness, the words of our, 
of the truth that we know in Jesus pushes back the demons of darkness. You know people who are beset by all kinds of demons. Right? We're called to push them back through the words of Christ. And then he healed people physically. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. We are called as we are sent out to bring his healing touch of love into the hearts of others. Healing of body, soul, mind, and spirit. We're called to be the hands and heart of Jesus in our world. You remember I, I mentioned that this wasn't just a one-time deal, but it went over and over again, and Jesus went everywhere. This, in the same chapter four, it says this. Jesus said, I must preach the news of the kingdom of God to other towns also, because that is why I was sent. He was always moving. And wherever God sends us, this is what, these are the footsteps we walk in. Uh, could I say, just, just real quick, this, this starts with our closest of relationships. You've heard me say this over and over again, but we speak truth uh, and, and his, his peace into the lives of those who are closest to us first. There's nobody that knows your spouse like you do. You know what peace of Jesus they need to have spoken into their lives. There's no one that knows your chil children like you do. There's no one that knows your parents like you do. There, there's no one that knows those closest to friends like you do. We speak God's peace into their lives. We bring his healing into their lives first because they're the closest to us. But then as we open our eyes, as we're, as, as we're walking on this mission that Jesus gives us, he again and again will bring others into our lives. And this is the mission that we're on. It starts with his peace because without his peace, we fill our lives with trying to give ourselves peace. And we can let go of ourselves and live in his peace. His spirit empowers us to live as he did. Now, through all of this, kind of like an a, a, a in, encircling reality, Jesus did one more thing. He formed disciples. The 12 were always with him, right? He said, come follow me. In, in every gospel, this is the very first thing he did in his ministry. Come follow me. He calls the disciples to follow him. Now, he preached to everybody, but he did life especially with these 12. Who has God called you to do life with? Parents, have you ever thought about, um, in the dynamic with your children, that you're actually forming disciples? Disciples of Jesus? Yeah. Have you ever thought about in the life group that we're spe as we speak his truth into our lives, as we pray together, as we're there for each other, we're forming each other as disciples? Have you ever thought about that Christian friend that you talk with on the phone and that you pray with, that you're forming each other as disciples? It was the, the encircling reality of what Jesus did. He was doing life with these 12. Yeah, he was, he was preaching and he was healing, he was casting out demons, but he was doing life with these 12. And part of that was on the job training. Remember the, the, the 5,000 when he fed them, right? They said, oh, we can't feed these guys. He said, here, I'll, I'll, I'll bless the food. You, you go give it to them. Well, yeah, that's a step of faith to me. I got a few little loaves of fish. I got 5,000 people. They're going to hang me, right? But, no, but the, what did they learn? They learned faith. They learned that Jesus would provide as they went out on mission. In fact, he provided food so much, Jesus said, collect what's left. And they had 12 basketfuls. Remember that? You think the disciples didn't learn from that? They grew as disciples. Or when he set them out two by two on the job training, and when they got back, what, what were they doing by day? They were preaching, they, 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 they were teaching, they were casting out demons, they were healing people that were sick. They came back and they talked about it. Who can you have a relationship like that in your life with? This is our purpose as we walk with Jesus, as we walk in our world. The reality always comes from the cross. <laughs> When Jesus called his disciples, there are two times when he used those words, come follow me, okay? One time it was, come follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. We know what that's all about, right? We teach people about Jesus. But there was another one. It said, come follow me, take up your cross and follow me. You see, this is what it means to be a disciple, to give up your life and to live in the resurrection. 
to die with Jesus every day by the power of his spirit and live as he lived in the resurrection. And in his name, to make disciples. Isn't that what he said finally? I know in Acts he said, you're going to be my witnesses in the whole world, but in Matthew, he said, go into all the world and make disciples. Where's God calling you to do that? In your life. The only way we can begin is to die to ourselves. To die to all those places where we would try to find peace in what we can accomplish and what we can do and put it all in the hands of the resurrected Christ. Receive his peace by faith and live in the mission into which he sent us. And we're never, ever alone. <laughs> we're never, ever alone because God promises. Go ahead, turn to the next one for me because God promises that we have his spirit. Isn't that what Jesus said at the end of his text? Receive the Holy Spirit. So if you're there and you're saying, I don't know how I can do this, you're not alone. The Spirit lives within you. Every day, by the power of his Spirit, you can die. That's what, you know, in Romans it says about our baptism, that we were buried with Christ by baptism into death. We are are hung, on, hung with Christ on the cross. We die with him. So that every day we're resurrected. We have a resurrection to live as Jesus did. And that's our purpose. And when that purpose can fill our life, when, when in every place in our life, by God's grace, by his spirit, we look to Jesus Christ alone for our peace not in anything we can accomplish, not in anything we can do, but in Jesus Christ alone, then we're freed. The chains are off. We're freed to live in the purpose of his mission and to be filled up with his mission as we live as he did, as we look to live in relationship with others, to be formed as disciples and to make disciples in his name. All right, this week, where do you need peace? Where do you need to receive the peace of the resurrected, the Savior, anew in your life? Do it. You, you got to do this first. Uh, b- because the place you don't receive is peace, that's the purpose to find your own peace that's going to fill up your life. You got to do this first. Now, no, number two, where are you looking for purpose in the wrong places? Where has this left you empty? Turn again to the purpose that Jesus gives. Turn to your mission in him. And number three, To whom is Jesus sending you? To proclaim his grace, to push back the demons of darkness, to heal in Jesus' name, and to make disciples. And blessed is he that hears the word of God and does it. Do it. May God's peace be with you. Amen.